Hi guys, my name is Dr. Alicia Spaulding and I'm the CEO and founder of Nature Nurture Pharmacy. And my name is Zoe and I am the Director of Operations at Nature Nurture Pharmacy. So our mission here is to build community health through the use of herbal medicine, sustainable food cultivation, and empowering education. Um, we're a really small organization, there are only uh, two of us here that are paid staff, <laughs> and then we have six board members who support everything that we do and help direct us, and then we have a huge number of volunteers who support our organization. So although um, we have a small number of, of actual paid staff, we are a huge organization um, in terms of you know our community support and how we are in this area. Um, we're located in Chehalis, Washington, which is in the Pacific Northwest. We are about two hours south of Seattle and about an hour north of Vancouver. And I chose to launch this, this business in Chehalis because I grew up in this county about 15 minutes south of here. And so when I went to Bastyr University um, School of Naturopathic Medicine in Seattle, I decided, you know, as I was as I was there, that I would love to bring back all this knowledge and this um, really incredible stuff that I'd been learning at Bastyr, bring it back and share it with my community, who kind of helped raise me, you know, and brought me to this air, you know, brought me to where I'm at in my life. And so that's why we chose um, this area in particular. Actually, um, about a year and a half ago, we brought Zoe on board, and Zoe um, is actually from Arizona, but moved up to this area, and so we've been working together um, for the last year and a half, kind of helping Nature Nature Pharmacy grow. Um, and so Nature Nature Pharmacy was started in 2018 uh, with the goal of making um, naturopathic medicine more accessible to the community. And so we started as a nonprofit organization, and so it's a little bit of a different business model. Uh, nonprofit doesn't mean that, that you don't actually make a profit, it just means that your mission and your, um, and your drive is more so towards investing in the community um, and cultivating um, you know, you're, you're cultivating investments, not profits. And so that's kind of, um, that's kind of our goal. Mm -hmm. um, so as, as a nonprofit organization, we tend to leverage assets more than we tend to um, leverage money. So we, we get a lot of things from other larger companies or um, other, other places, and then we filter them into the community that way. So so, for example, we received a huge donation from Eco Scraps. Is that who it was mm -hmm. from? Yeah. We received a huge donation from Eco Scraps um, of compost accelerator and other things that can be used in the gardens. And we have been able to include uh, those bags of compost accelerator into our garden kits, which is a huge fundraiser that is bringing. Um, not only funds into our nonprofit, but connecting garden resources to our community. So although our hands never touched this large amount of money, we did get a huge donation of these of this material that we were able to use. Um, additionally, we have partnerships with um, herbal companies that have donated uh, supplements. And again, we're not getting you know fifty thousand dollars in our bank account, but we're getting fifty thousand dollars worth of of supplements that we're able to put to our community. Yeah, so in a little bit um, non-traditional business model, we don't necessarily just make uh, make money off of our services that we provide. So some of our services include just naturopathic basic health care services. Um, we work with uh, community gardens and so we uh, help facilitate community gardens as well as um, and so we run one local community garden, which is uh, the Winlock High School. And then we also help other folks uh, to start gardens in different places. We also teach herbal education classes and health classes. And then we sell herbal products. And so we have a bunch of different avenues to our nonprofit and how that works. But we tend to, so we bring in, um, we bring in finances in a lot of different ways. And so this year in particular with COVID, um, we've had to switch a lot of our models and we've had to kind of um, uh, pivot and do different things. And so for a little while, um, a lot of in-person things just weren't possible. And so we're moving more now into a digital model where we're going to be hosting classes online this year in 2021, um, as well as, as just doing more um, digital interactions with people, whereas previously before we were definitely more of like an in the community, on the ground uh, organization. And we still would like that to be um, our main goal, and so we still 
you know, we still hosted the Winlock Community Garden all summer, and so we had people come, but due to COVID, we were just, we socially distanced, we, um, you know, made sure people were sanitizing and wearing masks and being safe, and so um, we've just kind of taken our, um, what we've been doing and switched it up a little bit. But realistically, you know, our efforts are focused in Lewis County, and that's where we want our energy to be. So we're trying to make all of our programs and and what we're and, and products accessible to our community. So although we did move things on um, onto an online platform, we're still focused on hitting our rural uh, local community. Um, where we're at is uh, is a huge agricultural community, and so that's kind of where the whole idea of food as medicine and gardening came in really strong for me. Um, I grew up really disconnected from my food sources and really not having any idea what Whole Foods was. And then I went to Bastyr School of Naturopathic Medicine that is all about um, using food as medicine and, uh, and talking about what that is. And so um, I realized and learned in school that it would be really incredible to go back to, you know, back to where I was from and teach folks that like, oh my goodness, we're, you know, we have a lot of uh, agricultural land, we have a lot of farms around us, people are already practicing this, how can we kind of incorporate it all together, you know, mind, body, and soul? That also allowed a lot of good partnerships um, because this is where Alicia grew up and it had a lot of connections, it was a lot easier to kind of establish ourselves as a credible nonprofit, um, uh, but also you know you already had a lot of these connections, being that this is where you grew up. Um, so having that just name recognition goes a long way when you're starting something new, and that comfortability to just talk to people and ask for help, um, and that's been pivotal with uh, NNF is being able to build those connections. Um, a lot of what we do here is through trade of services or, um, or or skills. And that's really helped further our mission in a lot of ways because we're able to get the things that we need here and we're also able to support other people's local, you know, farms, businesses, practices um, while supporting our mission. Yeah, exactly. Um, we do a lot of uh, cooperative work. So we're a small organization, there's just two of us, although we have tons of volunteers that are willing to do that, we realized really early on that we needed to create a niche and so or, or fit into a niche that's already there. And so instead of trying to do everything, which is kind of how we started, was like, oh my goodness, we're gonna save the world with naturopathic medicine and teach everyone these things, we realized very quickly um, that it was a lot of work even just in our small community. And so we kind of refocused our um, you know, refocused our mission into just our local community and how can we better this area because there are tons of people, you know, that are out there with this same action and so if each one of us are acting in our own little area, making our own, uh, our own little worlds better, the significant impact we're going to have on the world is huge. And so we're learning um, what our role is in the community and how we can best support the community. And then we've networked with tons of other organizations in our area. And so although our business model is set up slightly different as a nonprofit, um, this model really works for everyone. You know, uh, it doesn't have to be a competition. It, we can work in cooperation. And businesses tend to thrive when we work together. Um, and in reality, this whole competition model isn't necessarily sustainable, you know. Um, there's enough room for more than one grocery store in a county, right? The, you know, we need one, we, you know, we need one, um, we need one on every corner for lots of people. So instead of working in that model of competition, more so working in cooperation. And so we have um, built networks with other organizations that do things that are different than us or even like slightly aligned. You know, so we work with other healthcare cooperatives that do um, different things than we do. We provide a lot of preventative health services, a lot of um, foundations of health. And so we're not doing um, acute care, we're not doing emergency medicine. And so we work with other local organizations who do provide those services. And then we're able to kind of connect and grow together. So services they're not able to provide, they refer to us for those services and vice versa. And so with any business that you're growing, um, look for partnerships amongst other businesses um, or other groups that are doing similar things to you. Yeah, so just to give a couple more examples of what that looks like here, um, we have a really beautiful office uh, near downtown Chehalis. Um, it's a great location and we were only using this space a couple days a week and realized that it would be a wonderful space to bring in another practitioner. Um, so although our overhead for this office is very low, we realized that um, not only could we provide a space for another body worker um, in our community to practice, but it would be another way to help kind of keep our 
office overhead low. So we were able to uh, bring in a, another body worker who could use this space um, on times that we weren't. Um, so it, that was kind of a good twofold par partnership um, and it's bringing more uh, services to our community that's definitely needed. Um, and as far as kind of focusing in on our, on our, uh, our kind of niche area, realizing that there's tons of resources in our community. So NNF has become, or we're hoping it will become, kind of a hub of, of those resources um, where we can help connect the community to resources and services even if we're not the ones who are providing them. Because what we're learning is our community offers so much, but it can be difficult to access those services. Um, and simplifying it for, for our community, uh, I think is probably kind of falls into our goals of, of making healthcare accessible. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so that's kind of, you know, our, we kind of are, have three main um, areas that we're focused on in our, um, in our organization. So one of them is naturopathic healthcare. And so teaching people uh, the foundations of health and food is medicine. Um, the other one is uh, sustainable food cultivation. And so that really ties into the community gardens and local farmers. Um, and then the, the third is education. And so um, with the com Winlock Community Garden, we've actually been able to tie all three of those things together. So um, our organization is sponsoring and kind of founded the Winlock Community Garden at the Winlock High School. And there, um, it's a it's in a small town, rural, high rates of poverty, and um, limited uh, access to resources and food. And so right away, it was one of those things where, man, this you know helping to uh, helping the school to start a garden literally fills all of um, you know all of the the aspects of our mission. You know, and so at that at that um, community garden, not only are we able to um, grow food, and so we have this incredibly beautiful garden that we'll show you a clip of in just a minute. Um, but we're, we're able to cultivate food there that we're able to get to the community. We're able to teach the students how to grow food and what that looks like growing from seed all the way up to um, harvesting it and preserving it. Um, and then we're also able to connect members of the community with these students and so we're able to share knowledge with farmer, local farmers and folks who maybe wouldn't have another avenue into the school, maybe they don't have kids in the school or maybe they're much older um, and so they just don't have an, uh, a connection with the school and so this garden allows um, people to come together and the community to kind of support this organization um, that, that's just going to continue to flourish and so the garden has now been operating um, this will be this is its second year in operation and and we've made huge strides there and all because of the community you know us alone could not do all of this um, but our community together ha has made huge things happen and so we kind of use the six naturopathic principles to guide everything that we do which really falls um, in line with the whole idea of, re of regenerative businesses regenerative agriculture um, you know and all of that together and so the six principles of naturopathic medicine are uh, first, do no harm, uh, second, the healing power of nature, identify and treat the causes, doctor is teacher, treat the whole person, and prevention. And so our, you know, our operations kind of work to use all of those main principles in guiding everything that we do. So not only guiding what we do as far as um, with our healthcare services, but also guiding what we do in the community, how we give back to our community. Um, you know, and the first one, do no harm, is really, really important. It helps us to be super mindful. It helps us to be mindful um, of what the needs in our community are and how we can best serve people. Um, and that's actually something that I learned a long time ago from from a mentor um, said to be of service you know like if you're ever gonna be putting yourself out there you know if you're gonna start a business right you know it's got to be more than just for making a profit you, you know you want to be of service and whatever it is whether you're providing you know an actual service whether you're building something or a doctor or uh, you know uh, law services or if you're or if you're building um, an item that someone's gonna buy you know like you want you want your business model to, to be of service and when that's your intention then everything that you do will align with that, you know? And so just by nature, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to be hurting people um, because your intention is to do no harm and, and to be of service. And so that can be a really strong guiding principle, um, you know, when when setting up your business and what that looks like for you. And so one of the um, things that really guided me 
is um, I had a friend of mine uh, paint this picture for me a couple years ago and it combines the foundations of health which is what we call naturopathic medicine the things that you need um, to be healthy so that's uh, access to good clean uh, uh, water and food and air um, and we combine so the foundations of health with Maslow's hierarchy of needs so Maslow's hierarchy of needs talked about if you don't have um, these foundations of place you'll never reach self-actualization which is um, which is the peak, which is kind of what we're all here to achieve as humans, you know, and so when we look at the bottom, you know, as far as foundations of health and, and, and what your needs are as a human is, you know, fresh air, water, food, um, being in nature, clothing, a roof over your head, sunshine, good sleep, we then move up to, um, you know, the social support, exercise, friendship and community, um, love, whether that be that be self-love, that be, um, you know, sharing love with other people, platonic love, as well as um, intimate love, and then we get all the way up to uh, self-actualization. And so one of our, you know, our, our vision here at Nature to Pharmacy is to help people heal, help people grow, and help people flourish. And if they don't have their foundations in place, meaning if people don't have access to clean food or, or water or you know, they're breathing poor air, um, they're homeless, they don't have a roof over their head or have inconsistent housing, then it's really hard for people to, to really um, meet their life's purpose and, and to be doing what they're meant to be doing on this earth. And so that's kind of what, that, that's what guides everything that we do here at Nature Treasure Pharmacy. And, you know, um, over the last couple of years, that, that's shifted, you know, all, we, we're constantly shifting what we're doing in order to best meet the needs of our community. So one of our big projects is we run, we're launching a community health center in 2021. So we've been running a naturopathic health clinic through Nature Nature Pharmacy. Um, we offered a, a sliding scale and so we had a set hourly rate, but if folks couldn't afford that, um, we gave a 50% discount, and if folks couldn't afford that even, we gave a 100% discount. So we, we don't want there to be any barriers to care. Like, if people are willing to come in and do the work, then we want to make sure they get that. And again, we understand that's not really a business model that everyone can use, um, which is why we set up the nonprofit, and so other people can kind of help support support others. And so one of our big things through the community health clinic is um, as a naturopath, I use a lot of herbal medicine. And so, um, you know, I, I practiced and trained in herbal medicine when I was in school and then kind of and moved home to this rural community because my mom actually lives on five acres. And so that's where I grow uh, quite a bit of our herbal medicine. So not only do I cultivate it on our farm, and we've had multiple interns over the last three years who have worked on the farm with us, helped you know expand what we're growing. We have about 50 different varieties of herbs that we're cultivating. Um, and we make a lot of our own herbal teas, tinctures, glycerites, and thing at salves. A lot of salves for folks. And not only um, do we, you know, um, grow those products, harvest them, and then use them for medicine. One of our main goals is to teach other people. And so, not only do we want to, you know, do we do we grow those herbs and then sell them through our dispensary but we also then for example you know we grow calendula and then we teach a calendula um, salve making class so um, you know previously people were able to come into the office and we would have everything set up and teach people you know okay here's the calendula you learned how to grow here's how you harvest it all year and now once you have your calendula this is what you can do with it to make a product you know and so um, it's really amazing because some people are really excited and they want to come and learn but they still want to buy the product from you because they're, they're not going to be regular at making it um, other people I've had some patients come back where now they make all of their own medicines that, that we've been working with but they still come back you know um, for their preventive health services or to learn more and so it's actually strengthened our business relationship and what we're doing by by teaching and and sharing this knowledge with others and then the goal is that they share with others and now you know everybody's on the same page and we're all learning and growing and it's really really incredible and that's a great way to to show how one thing is hitting all all parts of our mission um, you know so using the calendula salve as an example we're producing it medicinally we're teaching people how to grow it and we're also educating um, people on how to make it into a medicinal salve or use it for health purposes um, and then kind of the the, the finer final layer layer of that is um, we can then sell these products online too to help bring in a little bit of income into our um, nonprofit to help 
further uh, to, to further these projects. So um, we are learning how to work smarter, not harder, and and think about how we can take one thing and make sure it hits every part of our mission um, and, and it's something that we can provide for free or for those who are willing to pay or able to pay it's it's also available um, so that's been able to feed us in a lot of different ways yeah and that in, in itself is very regenerative you know um, each system feeds into the next system and what we have found with our model of um, like the clinic that we're moving into is pay what you can model so we give a suggested uh, you know, a suggested amount that this service would be worth. Um, and then we say, pay what you can, you know. And honestly, people will say, oh, well, that sets you up for being taken advantage of. You know, people will take advantage of that situation. And honestly, what we've found time and time again is that people are often way more generous in that situation. They pay what they can or when they can't pay, they don't, but they still receive the exact same service. And either another generous community mm -hmm. member has covered that in another way, or when they're able, they come back and pay for the service when they can. Mm -hmm. And so in that way, um, the community grows stronger because you're supporting each other. And that's something that I think is really huge with regenerative um, agriculture, with regener regenerative businesses, mm -hmm. is that not just falling into the capitalistic model of your, your business must make a profit, um, but it's that you're, that you're feeding the community and that you're helping those around you, you know? And so, you know, we do ours in a little bit of a different model as far as being the nonprofit, um, you know, but if, if you're running a for-profit business, hooking up with other non, hooking up with nonprofits, hooking up with other businesses um, where you can create a service that you give back to the community within your, you know, within your organization. Um, people really want to support those kinds of businesses. And so when you're looking at wanting support from the community, um, it's kind of that whole idea of, you know, ask not what, what um, I can do for you, or ask not, <laughs> ask not what you can do for me, but, but, uh, anyways. Um, do you know what that one is? Yeah. Ask not what the what what the I don't, even <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, <laughs> the whole idea is that you're thinking about ways that you can invest back into your mm -hmm. community and strengthen it. Um, because honestly, businesses come and go very quickly and ideas come and go very quickly. But if you want to be a sustainable business in your area, then it is important to um, to invest in the community around you. Um, one of the big ways that we do that is is with the you know food is medicine. We have a ton of local farmers around here who are producing awesome food. Um, they have you know super great CSAs. Some are year round CSAs. Um, and before this year, even in this area, there are many people who didn't know what a CSA is. And for those of you who are watching, if you don't, um, it's community supported agriculture. And so it's where you kind of buy in directly into the farmer. So early in the season, you buy your share, um, which helps them to you know get started to produce crops. And then you get a box, you know, every week or two weeks or a certain amount of time set up um, directly from the farmer. And so it's a really incredible way to, one, access food locally. Um, so you're keeping your system, you know, keeping um, your carbon footprint small and, and getting your food locally, which is super important. But also you're supporting other local business owners in the area um, who, when times get crazy, like it has with COVID, um, are also there to support you, you know? And so in an area like ours, where we do have lots of, lots of agriculture around, um, the idea of food scarcity is, is less, you know, it's, it's further from your mind when you know you have a farmer down the road who's growing food. So even if you yourself are not in that place, which is a big thing we're pushing, mm -hmm. is to get everybody growing, if you're, if you're maybe not someone who's interested in growing food, but you at least know your farmer and can support your farmer, then you know where your food is coming from, um, which is huge on all levels. Um, when I was at Bastyr, we talked a lot about whole foods, you know, and then I got back to, you know, my rural area and people were like, well, what are not whole foods, you know, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's right. So starting with that basic education of, you know, whole foods are foods that come from the ground in their natural form. So all of your fruits and vegetables and your grains and your oils that are, that are in their natural form you know, those are your whole foods. And so 
that's a big goal here at Nature Nature Pharmacy is just that education on foundations of health. Um, and we're able to connect, you know, folks who come into our organization with local farmers, with local food services. You know, we have food banks in this area um, that, that get lots of donations from uh, um, farmers. We at the Winlock Community Garden donated a ton of produce this year um, to the Winlock Vader Food Bank, you know, and so that's a way that, that all these small things kind of can connect together in a re they're little ways, but they become really huge. And it again um, is not just you know our organization solely that's doing this, but we're able to work with others. And so one of the big things that happened at the Winlock Community Garden, um, and you'll see a clip of this, is that we, um, we were, not only did we raise food at the garden that we distributed, but we also were a host site for food drops. And so um, we hooked up with another local organization. And so then just through that partnership, they brought, um, you know, or facilitated us getting boxes of food, you know. And so we got the USDA farm boxes, um, as well as other food donated from farmers that came directly to our garden. And then folks from the community were able to get that. And so that was that all happened, you know, and we, and we distributed thousands of pounds of food that way this year, in a time where you know people were really worried about food access. A lot of folks lost their jobs in this area, and so you know this was a way that we were able to help support folks um, really passively, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so another thing that's pretty cool about what we're doing is that we tend to have those like seasonal ebbs and flows. Um, and so, you know, we have these really big pushes in, you know, uh, late winter and early spring to get the garden started and going and that goes all spring and summer. But then after harvest season, we kind of end up investing our energy um, in other places in our nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and that seems to, it, it transitions a little bit more into the medicinal side of things. Um, you know, the cold weather brings colds and flus, and this is a great time for us to refocus on that aspect of our mission and has really um, inspired the push for our community health center. Um, and with COVID um, needing to shift a lot of our model and putting services online and understanding that we have to continually adapt. Um, to the changes, so having almost a seasonal model to our nonprofit is really beneficial because we're not trying to balance all of these things at the same time. Um, we can kind of uh, put our focus onto one thing, and as that wraps up, we can shift into the other thing. And that's been a really uh, nice way for us to kind of get some respite from the things that are maybe really labor intensive and then shift more into something that might be co more cognitively demanding and then by the time we get burned out with that it's like all right let's get our bodies working again so it's a really nice uh, way that we kind of like naturally have set up our nonprofit to to c continually be like changing and moving and allowing us to stay kind of fresh on it mm -hmm. which I think has really been helpful um, in, in that regard. Yeah, and also kind of going along with the whole idea of, you know, herbal medicine, you know, medicine is seasonal and we're in the Pacific Northwest and so like right now we're kind of the tail end of, of mushroom season, you know, through the winter and it'll pick back up again in the fall or in the spring, sorry, and there are different herbs that we harvest during the, you know, during different times in the, of the year and so, you know, sometimes, you know, our biggest harvest season is spring and summer where we're just like harvesting non-stop and it's just a huge push and we're at the Winlock Community Garden all the time and we're helping other folks start gardens, you know, but now we're more kind of like, we've dug in a little bit more and we're more so making medicines. Mm -hmm. And so that actually brings up, um, one of our partnerships this year was with a, um, 
a grant and so we were able to buy a copper Olympic still, a beautiful still that we got shipped in from Portugal. And so that's kind of another way that we make things happen. So we're not necessarily collecting money, but we work with other um, organizations. This one, for example, was a um, was a grant through the federal government and we were able to buy equipment for the nonprofit that benefits you know not only our community in the ways that we're able to make products and get to people but also um, we're able to make things and sell them from that uh, the copper still is a, 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 a really beautiful piece of equipment we got a 40 liter still and so it's something that not a lot of folks you know um, small herbalists or individuals could purchase on their own and so our goal is to actually let local community members use that to either make medicine for whatever their business is or make their own personal medicine and so actually last night on the full moon I stilled this really beautiful um, mixture of um, rosemary and cedar and so it's rosemary that I grew in the garden and then cedar that I harvested um, from uh, a windstorm recently where trees had blown down and so I just took that um, and we stilled it and so one of the things with um, the still I wish you could smell this right now because it's amazing but is that uh, a still makes essential oils and so we're actually of the mindset um, where we use the byproduct of making the essential oil which is the hydrosol so if you've ever made an essential oil before or looked into the process it takes an, a significant amount of plant material to make a very small amount of essential oil um, and what we've learned is actually the more we've studied and, and talked to others is you know a huge part of um, part of the plant is the hydrosol the water part um, and that's a part that often gets discarded and not used and so um, my mentor uh, Dr. Wellover actually taught me this uh, last year um, she brought her copper still down and taught a class on our farm um, where we had community members come to it and and learn really cool stuff and it was really inspirational and so within a year um, through a grant which we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise we bought this still so not only can we use it but we'll also use it in the community um, and so that's kind of the idea of also shifting the model right now essential oils are huge on the market and they definitely have their purpose um, but there's also a whole nother side of that that people just have no idea because it's just been discarded and hasn't been profitable and so you know our goal is to kind of like share those things also with people you know and so if you don't know much about it um, look into hydrosols because they're super awesome so just to, to kind of give an idea um, this is not a jug full of essential oil. This is a jug full of hydrosol. If you can see the cap, it's probably, oh, it's less than half an inch, the, the red cap. The amount of essential oil in it is probably really only about a half an inch. Um, so how much plant material would you say you use? I use probably um, two and a half paper boxes, paper box sizes full of rosemary and cedar. Right, so getting only maybe about a half an inch of essential oil, and then this would typically just be discarded, but it's still, ha like the aroma is ridiculous. It mm -hmm. smells so good, and it's a little safer to use in certain situations, um, and is, has amazing properties, and, and so we're finding that that on its own is a little bit more sustainable, mm -hmm. and we can uh, use more of the, the parts of the plant and not feel as wasteful in our practices. Um, and, and so that kind of, again, ties in that education portion of like, holy cow, who, who knew how much it took to actually get that small bottle of essential oil that you go through and you know how fast. So. Mm -hmm. And so by educating folks on that, it allows things just to kind of come full circle. You know, people are more mindful about the products that they use, more mindful about, you know, how they're getting those products, what they're putting onto their body, what they're putting into their body, which is super important across the board. Um, even as a business owner, like you want to you wanna invest your money in places um, that, that, that align with your mission and feel good to you. Um, you know, if a, if a large company supports, um, supports something that you don't believe in, whether it be environmental destruction or political destruction, or doesn't matter then it's really important to not invest your money into that company also and be mindful of that yourself um, we're moving into an era where people want to invest in businesses that align with their values you know and so 
also in that mindset realizing that your business may not be for everyone and that's okay mm -hmm. you know don't shift your model and your and, and your dream to fit in with someone else's because that's not really that's not really how it works mm -hmm. you know and when you do that it's really easy to get confused and to lose sight of your mission and your goals and why you started and I think that that's that's across the board for anybody you know whether you're running a nonprofit or not mm -hmm. um, because I think that people who really believe in you know, sustainability and the environment, you know, you're not starting a business to make profits. And although that, that should happen because you can't survive without without making a profit. Um, and, and what I've learned actually as a business owner, I lived really in the mindset of a, a really poverty, poverty mindset, you know, like, well, let, you know, we don't need to make any money. The more money that we're making, you know, we must not be doing good enough work in the community. And that's really shifted for me in realizing that actually the more money we bring in, um, the more we're able to do in the community and the more we're able to do for those around mm -hmm. us. And so by, um, you know, by, by really doing good work with what we're doing and getting, you know, and bringing in money for that, mm -hmm. we're able to support our community in ways that are, that are very different than before. And so, um, it's all about, you know, figuring out, you know, what your business model looks like for you. Like I said before, like for us, you know, the nonprofit model is, is what worked for us, you know? Um, so yeah, as far as our business tips go, that kind of leads right into that. First and foremost, do what you love. Mm -hmm. um, as an entrepreneur, like this is gonna be your life. Like this is what you're gonna do mm -hmm. every single day. Like you know, as you know, and that's the beauty of it. You mm -hmm. know, you're starting this business that you get to create, um, and you'll you'll think about it all the time. And so make it something that you love. You know, um, because know that you're gonna be working on it forever, and and it's gonna be something that you dream about, and you talk to other people about nonstop. And so if it's not something that you're that you're truly passionate about, um, you'll burn out really quick and it won't be fun. I think it's also really important to articulate what making a profit means to you because it doesn't necessarily have to be monetary. Um, I have a background in teaching and education and I taught for five years. It's a, a, an extremely gratifying and more rewarding career. However, I burnt out so quickly. I didn't feel supported in all of the other ways that I needed to be supported in my life. And although now I'm I'm working at a nonprofit and financially not bringing in as much as I did as as a certified teacher, my mental health, my physical health and well-being, the, the positive support that I have around me, I'm I'm a, I'm a more successful person. I'm a more successful mother um, and a partner in this program. And to me, I feel more successful now than I did having a fatter bank account. And so I think clearly articulating what that means for you and might look like for your family. Obviously it's different for everybody, but we've been able to create this model that supports the community and also supports us in a really unique way. Um, and so I think what Alicia said is really, this is going to become your life, so do what you're passionate about, what you love, because um, you're going to invest a lot of time into it, but if you're if you do it correctly and if it's what you're what you're truly feeling connected to it's going to feed you in more ways than it's going to take from you yeah yeah and your business actually nourishes you it's not a mm -hmm. it's not a source of exhaustion or stress you know like i get up every morning excited to come to work um, and excited to do what I do, you know, and, and, and I run this business. And so I think that that's a really, really important thing to remember um, is that do what, you know, do what you love. And also remember, there's going to be other people who are doing what you do who might be, you know, more successful in their own realm or um, doing something that you had, had, had thought of doing and then you find out, oh, someone's already doing it. And that's okay. Do it. Start it because no one's you. So although they may be doing something similar to you, no one is going to be doing it just like you. Mm -hmm. um, and and although there are a million and one models and ways to start something, um, remember that make it unique to yourself, you know, and then when you are the business and you are what you're selling, then it really becomes easy, you know, because you love it and because it, it, it's just something that, that's in you, you know, so I think that that's extra important. Um, you know, also really remember who you surround yourself by, you know, mm -hmm. so the people that you bring into your business, you know, although you're, you know, you're an entrepreneur, you don't have to be alone, you don't have to do this solo, you know, um, have people who support you in what you're doing and find those people, find mentors in your field, find people who have already done it, mm -hmm. um, and don't find people who are jaded and burnt out, you know, <laughs> if you find people in that realm, like, you know, thank them for their time and energy and move on to someone else, move on to someone who can fill you up and inspire you. Mm -hmm inspire you to be a better person, inspire you to, 
to dive deeper into your business, inspire you to push you outside of what you're comfortable doing. Um, Cause that's a, that's a really big, you know, big important part is so you have people to share your highs and share your lows, you know. Um, I found that to be one of the biggest things when I started this, you know, this by myself is that it wasn't necessarily the, um, you know, the lows that I needed to share with someone. It was the highs, like the really cool things that, that, that had happened in, you know, in the community or through our organization. And so um, now, you know, we have a, a, a solid group of folks around us um, who support what we're doing and can see the work that we're doing and it's and it's huge you know um, keep uh, so like right off the bat um, if you're trying to start a business right now um, the best time to start is now you know so like if you've had this plan in your mind for a long time like start right now start small you know don't go and rent the biggest space that you can where you see yourself in 10 years you know with with all that stuff you know, rent a small room, share an office space with someone else, you know, right now is the perfect time to set something up online or digitally mm -hmm. or, you know, remotely. That, you know, the, the world is opened up for that opportunity. Um, it's kind of like that old saying, the best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago. Like the best time to start your business, you know, was yesterday, so start today, you know. Um, it doesn't matter that you're in the middle of a pandemic, like no time is going to be perfect. And so if you're passionate and you're excited, like start now. Um, get a business license, get a bank account, um, that would be my other huge uh, word of advice would be to separate your personal finances from your business finances immediately. If you're going to invest money into your business, great, write a check, put it into your business account and do it that way because that way right off, you know, mm -hmm. right from the very beginning, um, you'll be able to see how much you're putting in and whether things are working or not, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's a huge one. Um, also know your weaknesses, you know, like that's where Zoe comes on huge, you know, like I'm more of a like jump in and do it and then try to work things out along the way when sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, and Zoe keeps me grounded and Zoe, you know, make sure that Nature Pharmacy is organized and we <laughs> dot all our T's and cross all our I's because that's not my strong, you know, that's not my strong suit. I'm a doer. I'm not very good at you know, collecting data or, you know, staying organized. Um, but that's where Zoe comes in huge, mm -hmm. you know? And there's obviously still things that, that I can't do. And so we recognize like, oh, we should have an accountant <laughs> or like yeah. there should be like, we, we need a lawyer to look at our, our documents. So, uh, it's super important to know your limits, um, share your expertise. Um, but then when you're kind of at your limit, um, invest in in those big things like like an accountant have someone manage your yep. funds if that's not something that's that's your strong suit um, or a mar someone who can do your marketing like there's the, people have crazy amount of skills for things you don't have to know how to do everything yeah. but I think definitely prioritizing because if you're just starting out you're not going to need all those things like that didn't become important for us until like pandemic hit and we realized oh we should have a better social media presence like we need someone to help us with that um but you're going to constantly be shifting and adapting with times yeah and it's okay to have other people help you so it's again it's back to that just because you're an entrepreneur doesn't mean that you're going to be able to run every single aspect of your business you know so being able to connect with folks who can you know fill that need for you and like definitely an accountant mm -hmm. is a huge one for us we now have someone who's working on social media with us um, and so, you know, we're beginning to grow. And so that's the other thing is start small, you know, start small, but dream big and be prepared to grow into that. So, you know, at some point you're going to start hitting some growing pains where either you, you stop and stay where you're at and don't go any bigger, or you make that shift and you grow into, you know, you grow and expand even further. So right now, Nature Nature Pharmacy, we're at that expansion stage where we're beginning to bring in, you know, more practitioners, you know, bring in other folks who are helping us do things, you know, we also contract out things, you know, so we teach a lot of classes. We actually, um, you know, we're in Washington State, and so Fungi Perfecti hey, and Host Defense, they're just <laughs> north of us, you know, and so we work with them. They came down last November and taught um, in person uh, farming with fungi classes. Uh, this year, um, or actually in 2021, we're hooking up with them, and they're going to be doing some um, digital classes for us, you know, and so connecting with other organizations. I just began to learn about mushrooms. So it is like, you know, I know a lot about herbal medicine and about herbs, but mushrooms are really brand new to me. And so we're bringing in the experts. We're bringing in people who know what they're talking about to kind of share that knowledge. So, um, you know, build your network strong and have people who can do the things that you can't do. Um, 
keep your overhead low you know when you're first starting out like I said you know yeah it would be awesome to have like you know a window front space in downtown but if that's not in your budget and you're gonna have to work night and day in order to just pay your rent and keep your overhead alive um, it's not gonna be sustainable and it's not gonna be fun you know and so if you can keep your overhead as low as possible when you first get started and then expand and grow as you're ready to you know um, that'll just set you up for success so for example like right now you know in the last 10 12 months or 10 months since the pandemic hit there we've had a lot of highs and lows a lot of ups and downs and mm -hmm. so the fact that we were able to keep our overhead super low um, has meant that we, we've been able to survive in times where we may not have previously you mm -hmm. know and so I think mm -hmm. that that's that's super important yeah and then um, investing in your business so kind of thinking about the accountant and thinking about other things as investments not necessarily expenses mm -hmm. um, and that and the whole investment not only in your business but in yourself and in your community it comes back in huge ways um, and so I think that that is a really you know really important thing um, yeah that's like pretty much our main business tips you know for me what kind of shifted when I was realizing that I really wanted to run a business, but I wasn't I wasn't set up to run a business in a capitalistic market. Like I wasn't <laughs> set up to run a business that was really cutthroat and that charged top dollar for things. And so I actually read this book, um, Proposals for the Feminine Economy by Jennifer Armbrust, and she I I was following her on social media and um it is really all about, you know, um creating the world that you creating a business model um, based in the world that you want to live in, you know, so not creating a business um, that is just constantly taking and not giving back, not creating a business that doesn't feed your soul, you know. So realistically, the last business tip that we have is don't worry about failing because it doesn't really exist. Um, there are going to be lots of things that you're when you're starting something new, it feels uncomfortable and awkward and weird, um, but push through, you know, mm -hmm. and don't be afraid to fail because when you're starting something new, it's not failing. It's just you have to shift your model a lot and something may not work and that's okay. Try something different. Um, if you go out there with the intention of putting, you know, your best foot forward and doing something to make the world a better place and especially your world around you, then you can't fail. You know, and so it just allows you to, you know, you just change your mission and, and um, redirect what you're doing, but you can't really fail. And so don't worry about that. Just get started and just do it, you know. Um, thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of this uh, regenerative business talk. We're super excited about all the folks that are watching this and that are ready to kind of start off that on their own journeys. And if we can be of any help to you, please reach out. Yeah, um, we can be reached on social media at Nature Nurture Pharmacy um, or on our website, naturenurturepharmacy.org. If you have any questions, we're always happy to answer them. Um, or if you are curious how we can work together, we, of course, would love to talk to you about that as well. Bye. Bye, thanks.